Help us, Jesus. We pray on us. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Praise God forevermore. If you are not doing anything there, you can just come there. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Can you just welcome someone to church this evening? Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Thank God for... You can have your seat. Glory to Jesus. We thank God for the privilege he has given us to be in his presence again this evening. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's be fast and settle down. Whatever you are doing, do fast and take your seat. I don't want any distraction. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, good evening. Welcome to church. Uh, we thank God for the privilege He always gives us. I'm not talking about desires, it's for the privilege He always gives us to gather as His people. Amen. Like you already know, that the gathering of God's people is the most important gathering in the whole world. Amen. So one of the most important meetings on earth is happening just here tonight. Praise God forevermore. Or would you prefer to be in the White House? Or you to be in Asso Rock? Where the Shengana must go? <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. And we thank God because he always honors us with his presence whenever we come. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. This sound is, is good. Can you hear me? I appreciate AY. Very good sound. Amen. God, God, God has promoted you. You have moved from manual mixer to digital. It's good to have good tools. So your skill will show. <laughs> If Messi was playing for a Yimba, uh, he, he will not become, he will not win Ballon d'Or. Amen. His glory will not shine. <laughs> Praise God. Are we ready for this evening? Are you sure? Are you sure you are ready? Amen. Are you sure you are very ready? I can't hear you. Amen. The Lord will bless someone today. The Lord will bless someone today. It is me. It could be you. It could be someone by your side. But it is me. <laughs> it could be you. It could be someone by your side. Give us understanding tonight, Lord. Give us grace. Cause your word to come to us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to continue this evening our conversation on reigning in life. Glory to God. On what? Reigning. Reigning in life. It has been an amazing conversation. You see, and this is the plan of God for us. If you look at the <laughs> if you look at the evangelist Paul teaching, right, since he came to church, it has been in line with this, right? Showing that this is the kind of life that God expects us to live. He was not aware that I was teaching reigning in life, right? There was no conversation between us. But because God wants, you see, whenever God is emphasizing a matter, 
Are you hearing me? It's because that is his plan for his children in that phase, in that season. Are you understanding me? So we must run with these words. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Until they become our experience, until we reign as kings in this world. Amen. Because you know my series is a very, very long one. So we are still scratching it. Amen. But we'll continue to enjoy it. 50 years time, we are still here. <laughs> are you running away? Tell me, are you running away? If you run away, you'll come back. <laughs> I'll come and carry you where you are. Amen. So, of course, it's been an amazing conversation so far. I, I checked again today. I thought that we started this series in March. We started it in March. I remember. I checked today. We started in March. And we are marching towards our greatness. <laughs> Praise God. So, we've seen now that we've been seeing how that the plan of God for the believer is to what? Is to reign in life. Amen. Praise God forevermore. And I told you that I, I divided this teaching into three headings, right? Glory to God. Is it can say yes? So you are telling me the headings. The being called man. That's the first heading. What's the other heading? Hmm? The origin of death. Then the reign of righteousness. Then we are still under the being called man. Then under the being called man, we are now we have we have three divisions again, right? Hmm? No, we have two divisions. We have man as God's representative on it, and also what man as God's representation. <laughs> are you with me? Man as God's representative, then man as God's representation. So we are still currently on what? Man as God's representative. Amen. I began with, and I began to make you understand that man as God's representative talks about man being God's ambassador, being God's elect, being God's mouthpiece on earth. Are you with me now? Without man, God cannot achieve anything in the realms of the earth. Amen. And it's been great so far. We went to the book of Revelation and we are still there. The Bible says there was what? War in heaven. You need to be very fast this evening. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. Let them just enjoy it. They can't go anywhere from there. They cannot pass up and go somewhere. It's better they are up. <laughs> Don't stress yourself. Just get that door closed. You can lock it. So I do not go to the toilet or something. Amen. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says that, and there was war in heaven. Okay? Lord, we receive grace tonight. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Okay? So we've said a lot of things about this already, right? That there's always what war in heaven. We began to investigate this war so that as believers we can understand accurately our own position on earth. Amen? Amen. So, of course, I established you that this war actually speaks about the war that actually broke out in the home of angels, where they eventually evacuated Satan. It was some money Lucifer, though that's not a problem, okay? That's the literal meaning. For those of you who love the literal meaning of scripture, that's the literal meaning, okay? But beyond literal meaning of scripture, there's something called application. Okay? So I now began to apply this war that took place in heaven, okay, to the world that is also taking place in the heaven of the earth. I began to learn from this world the nature of the world that the believer is involved in as the ambassador of God. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. So, I began to show you that looking at this passage and applying it to the life of man, okay, I said that every community has a spirit space called what? Heaven. Do you still remember that? 
When last did you read your notes? <laughs> that there's something called what? Heaven. And that is the spirit space of every community. And by community, I said I was talking about both society, uh, uh, institutions, systems, people, and all of, and what have you. I hear what I'm saying to you now. Amen. Praise God forevermore. So, and I said that it is the person of the spirit of power that is ruling in the heaven of a community. I hear what I'm saying to you now. That will determine the outlook, the natural outlook. That will determine what happens in the earth of that community. The earth has its own heaven. I hear what I'm saying to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That heaven is the home of angels. But from scripture, you find that the heaven, the earth has what? Its own heaven. It has a spirit realm. There's a spirit realm. There's a spirit space, okay, from which the earth is ruled. And I've shown you some scripture. I show you the prince of Persia. I show you the kingdom of Persia. I hear what I'm saying to you. And the Bible talks about uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world. Of this world. The, not heaven, not angels. Heaven. The rulers of the darkness of this world. So that means there's something called the darkness of this world. And I told you darkness does not mean black. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Darkness in that concept, in that context, means something that is veiled from you. You can't see it. It's veiled from the natural man, from the mind. That is the heaven of the community. I hear what I'm saying to you. Amen. So, things are orchestrated from heaven. I hear what I'm saying to you now. Are you with me? Are you understand what I'm saying to you? You see, I'm, I'm in God's presence. Just don't distract me. Just enjoy yourself. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Am I just enjoy the flow? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Praise God forevermore. Are you still with me? Things are what? Orchestrated from where? From heaven. The earth is ruled from where? From heaven. Hear what I'm saying to you? Things don't just happen. Are you still with me now? Things happen because they've been orchestrated from heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That is the spirit realm, the spirit space, the spirit dimension, the spirit space, are you understanding me, of every community. I'm just trying to refresh your mind. Are you with me? You can go back and listen. I've, I've explained a lot already. Are you with me now? Amen. Praise God. You see, and I, I began to show you from the ministry of Jesus and his disciples, okay? That Jesus expects us to sit in heaven. Are you understanding me? He expects us to sit in the heavens of our cities, of our communities. You see, because you see, the work of reconciliation, the work of an ambassador is serious work. It is to deliver a people. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you now? It's to deliver a people, it's to deliver a city from the power of darkness. I hear what I'm saying to you. It is to bring the people, a city, to a new order of life. Because, you see, I, I hear what I'm saying to you. And the order of life of a city, are you, are you with me? The order of life, the path of life, the order of life of a city is determined by the power that rules its heaven. Are you still with me? So the Bible says the sons, the spirit at work in the sons of disobedience. And the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. He said there was a time you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Amen. That's an efficient. According to the what? To the prince of the power of the air. Glory to God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. 
When in time past you walked according to the course of this world. So there's a pattern, there's a, there's a trajectory of the world. Are you with me now? According to the prince of the power of the air. You see, and that course is determined by the prince ruling where? The air. What does he mean by the air? Is the air O2, nitrogen, and all of that? No, no, no. He's talking about the heavens. The heaven of the, of the earth. Are you understanding me? Are you what I'm saying to you? So the world will go, the world will go in the direction of the prince, of the ruler ruling its air, its heaven, its spirit space. Are we still together now? Shout hallelujah. The spirit which that now walked in the children of disobedience. So it determined their life pattern, their lifestyle. Are you with me? Why? Because he's the prince of the power of the earth. He's the one ruling in the heavens. Are you still with me? Are we still together? Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus, I, cho- I showed you in the book of Luke, when Jesus sent his disciples on a ministry journey to go and heal the sick, that's in Luke chapter 10, from verse 1. He sent them to cities and places where he himself would come. He told them to heal the sick and all of that, okay? And he told them that once they heal the sick, they should say to them, that the kingdom of God has now come near to them. Okay? And if you go, we are not going to read it again because we have taught it already, okay? But if you now run to verse 20 where I stopped, Jesus Christ told them, when they came back rejoicing, when they came back and they were rejoicing that the spirits were subject to them, okay? I don't want to, I have many things to say, so I don't want, I've taught you this already. I'm just trying to do a refresher course. Amen. When they came back, the spirit was subject to them. Jesus Christ says, don't be, don't rejoice because the spirits are subject to you. Rejoice, why? Because your names are written in heaven. Amen. And you see, when they came back, Jesus Christ said, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Satan fell like lightning from heaven. He then went ahead to say, rejoice because what? Your names are written in heaven. So I told you that the reason why the people were in the bondage of sickness, why they were bound, are you understanding me? Was because demons, Satan, was the one ruling in their heavens. But immediately the disciples went and began to heal them. I just cried to them to tell them why. He said, the kingdom of God is near you. That is, we have now brought the kingdom of God into, this, into your space, into your air into the heavens of your community. Are you understanding me? So Jesus Christ now said that you disciples rejoice. Why? Because your names are written in heaven. What does that mean? The places where Satan once ruled. Are you understanding me? You disciples are now ruling there. You are now sitting there. Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? Jesus Christ said, notwithstanding this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice, because what? Your names are written in heaven. Because what? Because your names are written in heaven. So it means that for the believer, we are not going to stop until what? Until our names are what? Written in heaven. Are you with me now? Are you with me now? Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That we are not going to stop until what? Our names are written in heaven. You see? Because until our names are written in heaven, the people on earth are going to be bound by darkness, by Satan. Are we still together? They're going to be what? Bound by darkness. So, it is as our names are written in heaven, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That we, we bring 
the institution of God's kingdom into the heavens of our community. Are you understanding me? And when that happens, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because our names are written in heaven, because we are now the one occupying the spirit places, the spirit are realms. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Shout hallelujah. We are the ones sitting in the heavens of our communities. With the, our communities are now going to see the flow of God's glory and his power. Amen. Shout hallelujah. So you can just go back and listen to the previous teachings. I think I, I really talked about this in the last teaching. Amen. Can I put one more block to the end? We just thank God. Are we, are we ready? Are you sure you are ready? Now go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Thank you, Jesus. And there was war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Now go to verse 8. And prevailed not. Okay. And what? And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Are you understanding me? Neither was what? Neither was their place found anymore where in heaven. Of course, I, I don't need to tell you again that this is talking about the literal stuff, doesn't about the heaven of it. Are you understanding me? But we are applying to our own warfare in this world. And we've seen, I've taught you, I've shown you, particularly in the last teaching, right? That there's an heaven that controls the earth. There's an heaven of the earth. I've shown you in, 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 in this series, in some past teaching in this series. Amen. Are we ready now? And prevailed not, neither was what? Their place found anymore where? In heaven. Are we still ready? Are you, are you still together with me? The Bible says, as it is in heaven, so it is what? On earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I showed you that, what, that you see, this war in heaven, in the heaven of angels, is a type of how our own war on earth against Satan would be. How it should be. Are you understanding me? So, you see, we must wage war against Satan until their place is no longer found in the heavens of our community. Are you still with me now? Are you sure you are with me? And their place was found no more in heaven. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? We must wage this what you see as ambassadors, as representatives of Jesus, we won't be able to take our cities for Jesus if Satan still has a place in the heavens of those cities. Are you what I'm saying to you? You see, we might be building a lot of buildings and even getting people into church. Counting numbers. Are you, are you here what I'm saying to you? But you see, real salvation, real deliverance, real transformation will not be taking place in our cities, in our communities, as long as Satan and his angels, his demons, still have a place in the heaven of our cities, of our communities. Are you here what I'm saying to you? So, we must wage war. We are here to wage war. Are you what I'm saying to you? Until Satan no longer has a place in the heavens of our communities. Oh, when that happens, are you understand what I'm saying to you now? We are now going to see transformation of the earth. Are you what I'm saying to you? So Jesus Christ said, don't rejoice. Don't, don't be glad. Merely because the devils are subject to you. He rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That don't stop until Satan no longer has a place in the heaven of your community. Don't stop until Satan no longer has a place in the heaven of your city. Are you what I'm saying to you? You see, that's our mandate. Are you what I'm saying to you? Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. Amen. And prevailed not. 
Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Are we, are we ready? You see, the call is to wage war until Satan is thrown out of the heaven of every city and every community. Are you understanding me? But can I show you the end of that war? You see, this war, even though it's a war, is an ongoing warfare. Are you understanding me? But the end is that Satan and his angels prevailed not. You didn't get that. Are you understanding me? You see, we are not fighting for victory. Are you hearing me now? We are fighting from victory. Did you get, you get what, I, what I just said? Are you understanding me? We are not trying to fight to now see who we win or who we not win. Are you understanding me? You see, the only reason why we will not enforce the victory is if we don't fight. You see, but if we fight, we are sure of the outcome. The outcome is that Satan and his angels prevailed not. They were cast down. Oh my God. Oh my God. I see a people casting Satan down from the heavens of their cities. I see a generation casting Satan down from the heavens of their communities, from the heavens of the technology space, from the heavens of music, from the heavens of education, from the heavens of business, from the heavens of commerce, from the heavens of politics. A generation is now rising that is casting Satan down. A generation is now rising whose names are being written in the heavens of those places. Because it's now about time for righteousness to fill the earth. It's now about time for the knowledge of of the glory of God to cover the earth. As the waters cover the sea. Are you what I'm saying to you? So, you see, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You see, I told you in this teaching, I want to teach specifically about the church. But who is the church? It's all the believers, you see. But what I'm saying can apply to your personal life. It can apply to your business, to your career. Once you win in the heaven of your career, you begin to see fruit in your head, in your natural life. Once you win in the heaven of your business, you now begin to see fruit in the natural life. Are you with me? And what? I'm previewed not. You see, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? You see, as a church, eh, we are not fighting, we are not trying our luck to see if we, we can we'll be able to save the city. Are you understanding me? We are sure that this war, we, we prevail. Satan cannot prevail. Why? Because at his, as it is in heaven, so it is here on earth. Are you understanding me? When he invaded the realms, the heavens of the angels, they cast him down. Are you understanding me? So we are also going to cast him down from the heavens of our own earth. Are you understanding to you? So this is a pattern for our warfare against Satan. Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you still with me? Glory to God forevermore. And prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. You see, can I talk to you? It's possible, are you understanding me, to get rid of Satan from every city. Are you understanding me? I'm telling you that it's possible for what? For us to get rid of Satan from our community. It's possible. It's possible for a community to be known for righteousness. It's possible. Are you understanding me? The target is to eliminate Satan from the heaven of that community. Are you understanding me? But the question is, are we ready? Don't worry, I'm I'm trying to show us the dynamics. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? This this teaches up to verse 12. That's where I'll show us the real dynamics of how to eliminate him. It's not just prayers, though. Are you what I'm saying to you? It's not just prayers, though. So that's why I'm taking my time. If it's prayers, eh, every community, every city will have become righteous by now. Everybody will be following Jesus if it's about prayers. If it's just about prayers. Are you what I'm saying to you? Eh? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So there's a way to cast Satan down from a community. There's a way. But the point is, it can be cast down. And I said, we are going to cast him down from the heaven of this city. I'm telling you the truth. We are going to cast him down. 
until the whole city comes to Jesus. You see, can I talk to you? When you see a community, you know what I mean by community? People, places, enterprise, systems, and all of that. When you see it walking in righteousness, you know what has happened? Satan has been cast down from its heaven. I hear what I'm saying to you. You hear men go into villages, into places with thick darkness. Are you understanding me? And eventually, people now began to taste for, taste for Jesus. Do you know what happened? Satan was cast down from the heavens of that city. And our fathers, you see, it's not just in the Bible. Our fathers, our fathers, those ones, there are some of them are still alive. They've done this over and over. Are you hearing me? They've done what? They've done this over and over and over and over. You see, our own cannot be different. You see, we are here to take a gun for Jesus. We are going to cast it and down from the heaven of this city. And our names will now be written in the heaven. Are you understanding me? You see, you are going to go to the tech space. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And cast down Satan from that heaven. From its heaven. You are going to purify music. Purify education. Are you still with me now? Can I show you what Jesus Christ said about this warfare? Go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 16. I only plan to take verse 8 today. Maybe 8 or 9. Matthew chapter 16. You can read from verse 13. Let me show you what Jesus Christ said about this warfare. I'm trying to assure you here that victory is sure. Are you understanding me? Are you hear what I'm saying to you? Praise God. Matthew 16 from verse 13. I'm trying to show you that what? Victory is sure. <laughs> Can you say no shaking? Can you say no shaking? You see, if you plan to build great businesses for the Lord, are you understanding me? Say no shaking. You, what you are planning is that what? You want to cast down Satan from the heavens of that particular of those businesses. Are you what I'm saying to you? And I've told you, I told you the last time I, I taught you this. I see? Nobody gets to the, to the high places in this life without casting down Satan. At most, you'll just be doing fine. Are you understanding me? I showed you from Ephesians that what, what is in those high places is what is spiritual wickedness. Can you say spiritual wickedness? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Are you understanding me? Are you with me now? You see, but, I, but you see, we have been saying, hey, to dethrone these powers, these principalities, these princes. Are you still with me now? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. But see, I'm going to show us that the nature of this war is that we have won. Can you say we have won? I can't even say we have won. Are you still with me now? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus came, you see, you know why Jesus Christ is not afraid to send, to plant churches in cities full of darkness? Eh? It's because of the nature of this world. The end is that we have won. He cannot prevail. He will be cast down. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It will be what? It will be because that is his destiny. You see, can I talk to you? From the moment Satan fell from heaven, eh? Destiny is always to be cast down. Are you understanding? Can I talk to you? The place of Satan is under the feet of the believer. Oh God. Are you with me now? You hear what I said? The place of what? The place of Satan is under the feet of the believer. Are you understanding me? And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between a seed and your seed, and it shall bruise your head. Are you bruised? It's bruised. Are you understanding me? Oh, and Paul began to admonish us in Romans. He said what? And the God of peace, and the God of peace, and the God of peace, shall crush, shall bruise Satan. Where? Under your feet. How soon? Shortly. 
is not stress. If you get these protocols, if you get the, the, this lifestyle, these things, you will find that, are you understanding me? The place of Satan will always be at your feet. Yes. Are you with me? Are we still together? When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Okay? And they say, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay? Keep reading. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Bless that thou, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Okay? But my Father, which is in heaven. Now, I need to, I, I, I want to show you something in this scripture. But my Father, which is where? In heaven. And I've told you about the heaven of God. It's not even the heaven of angels. He's talking about his realm, the realm of glory. Eternity, God's eternal realm. Are you understanding me? That is that heaven. Father, which is in heaven. Well, let's keep reading. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. Let me finish reading it. I'll read to verse 19 and I'll, I'll start picking some things. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay? And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding me? Now this kingdom of heaven again is talking about God's kingdom. The realms of God. Not heaven of angels. And whatsoever that shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Now, this heaven, eh, I'll show you shortly, is not the heaven of God, God's kingdom, and it's not the heaven of angels. Relax. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And whatsoever that shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Are we ready now? Are you sure? So, Peter answered and said what? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay? Then verse 18, it says what? And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will do what? I will build my what? My church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Are you ready? Revelation chapter 12 verse, verse 8 says that what? It says that what? And it prevailed not. Uh. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? And they what? They prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore. And prevailed not, neither was a place found anymore in heaven. Go back to verse 18 of that Matthew. And I'm going to build my church upon this rock, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we have one assurance about our warfare. What's the assurance? The gate of hell will know what? Prevail against us. In your marriage, what? The gate of hell will know what? Prevail. In your finances, I can't hear you. The gate of hell will not prevail. In your business, the gate of hell will not prevail. In your health, the gate of hell will not prevail. In your, in your career, the gate of hell will not prevail. In your ministry, what about in your city, in your community? So you are sure of where you are going. You are sure of the end of the journey. Oh my God. When you know the end of a thing, should it not make the journey very interesting? But sometimes we fight like we are not sure. Are you hearing me? We fight like what? Churches fight like they are not sure. Churches are in a hurry to quickly get members because they are not even sure. They are not sure that victory is starting. 
They are not sure that the whole city will, in, in, will eventually come. And what, they will come to what? They will come and say, let us go and learn his ways. It's not to go and dance this school. You see, the crowd that the church is trying to pull by itself, they are coming to Isuya. Are you hearing me? They are coming for comedy. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? You see, but the crowd that comes after we have won victory, after we have enforced victory in our heavens, in the heavens of our city, you see, these crowds will be coming to do what? To learn the ways of the God of Jacob. Mm. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? That's it. And, no, 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 verse 2. Verse 2. Glory to God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. And the, 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 the mountain of the lost house, praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You are not flowing with me. You are preaching your own gospel. But go to verse 2. And it shall come about in the last days that the mountain of lost house, you see this now, shall be established in the top of the mountains. Uh -huh. And shall be exalted above the hills. It's going to be the one ruling in the heavens. And all nations shall flow into it, you see. Why will all nations flow into it? Because it has been exalted. It has prevailed. It has cast down Satan from the heavens of his community. Are you understanding me? You see? So eventually, the God way, you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Can I talk to you? Don't say God does not love multitude. He does not love crowd. That our church, you know, you know why we are small? It's because we are carrying God's glory. It's a lie. It is a lie. It's not the will of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Eventually, God wants the nations. Can you say the nations? Because when people pride themselves in small numbers, now our church, we are the remnant. We are the remnant. We, you are, not, are you understanding? We are the remnant number. We are the ones that Jesus Christ is coming for. We are carrying his glory. Every other church is polluted. We are the, it's a lie. That's why we are small. It's not true. Are you hearing what I'm, what I'm saying to you? The plan of God is what? Is the nations. God wants the nations to flow into what? His church. Are you understanding me? You see, and the most genuine way, and the quickest way actually, but in our natural calculation, it looks so long. <laughs> the most genuine, the most authentic way, and the quickest way to bring the nations, to bring the city into the church, are you understanding me? Is that we, we ensure that the house of God is exalted. What does that mean? Is to win victory in the realms of the spirit. Are you understanding me? Is to cast down, is to cast down Satan from heaven, from the heaven of our city. You see, once we cast Satan down from the heaven of our city, we have enforced victory in the spirit. That is that exaltation. Then the other one will be that what the nations would flow into it. You see, and these nations are not coming for rubbish. Come and see where they are coming from. And men who shall go and say, Come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Uh -huh. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. So, those nations, those many people, there's something they are looking for. There's a reason why they are join, joining church. What's the reason? We want to go and learn the ways of God. We want to walk in his paths. You see, do you understand what I'm saying to you? So, it is possible for a church, are you understanding me? It's possible for multitudes to join the church and they are on fire. Oh, when the church in Acts of Apostles was growing, you think they were doing Suya night? You think they were doing Tumba night? You think they were doing cryptocurrency? Business? I hear what I'm saying to you. You use Sunday service to, an to analyze the forex market. <laughs> you think that's what they were doing? If that's what they were doing, eh, the moment crisis hit that church, when they got scattered, you see, their mind will be that they have jackpot. They will look for greener paths. Ah, oh, Olu, I'll show. Let me just go and hide and start making money. You see, but to show you that the multitude, those multitude, as many as they were in the church, to show you that they were soldiers, missionary, apostles. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When they became scattered, the Bible says that what those that were scattered were they went about preaching the word. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You see, multitude crowd is not the reason for weakness in the church. Uh, are you understanding me? 
that the church has numbers, has Christ, not the reason why the people are not on fire. The people are not on fire because the church did not win in the spirit. And the people came in through foul means. Are you what I'm saying to you? You see, once the church wins in the spirit, are you understanding me? The people that will come in, even though they might be coming in as, 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 as a rose girl, they might be coming in as a drug addict, you see, the only thing in their heart is let us go and learn the ways of God and walk in his path. Go back to Matthew. Praise God. Are you sure you are still with me? Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So, about your life, what's the end? The gates of hell will not prevail. What about, about this church? Are you sure you are, you are ready? And I said to you that thou art. I want to show you something very, very serious here. <laughs> For some of you who are running from some places. I'm not talking about your natural life. You say, ah, I can't walk in this place. So. I can't, it's too dark. It's too dark. I can't go into politics. So. Ah, I cannot stay in this company. So. Ah, the level of darkness there is too much. You are not a serious person. Why did the Bible call you the light? Do you need light where light is? Imagine someone coming into this church now. You see how this place is, is, is lit up. Someone should now bring touch light. And says he wants to help us so that we can see. I hear what I'm saying to you. Like someone should come in with touch light now and say, Ah, we need light, too. we need light so that we can be able to see ourselves. What, what's going to come to your mind? You're going to think that the person is not okay in his mind. Maybe, maybe the person is insane. Are you understanding me? Are you what I'm saying to you? Why? Because he's bringing light, touch light into this amount, massive amount of light. You see? But what if all the light here went off? Are you understanding me? And someone just quickly walks in with a touch light. What do you think about that person? You are grateful. You appreciate him, right? Why? Because light, eh? The value, can I talk to you? The value of light is darkness. Oh, you didn't get what I said. <laughs> are you understanding me? You know what I just said? I said what? The value of light is that. What's the meaning? Light only has value. Are you understanding me? When you place it in the midst of darkness, inside darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When does light have value? When you place it inside what? In the midst of darkness. You see, you see what, what I'm doing to you through this teaching. Eh? I need you to prepare yourself because God will be sending you to strange places. That you just think in your natural mind, you think that, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want to be in this place. The sin is too much here. So where do you want to be? How would God transform places like Babylon if he didn't send men like Daniel? I hear what I'm saying to you. You see, it's about time for this earth eh, to now experience the power of our gospel. And Jesus Christ already said, so what? Please, if you don't know script, the scriptures that will fit what I'm saying, just stay on what I'm saying. Don't go, don't go. Because when I look back, I want to see what I'm saying. Hmm? Or what fits what I'm saying. So don't go up and down. And Jesus already said that what? Go ye into what? All the world. Are you understanding me? All the world. Go everywhere. Go into all the world. I hear what I'm saying to you. So, the earth is about to experience the righteousness of God, the glory of God. I, it's not going to happen in your room. No, no, no. It's not going to happen where you are praying seven hours. It's not like, can I talk to you? It's not going to happen inside this church building. Are you understanding me? We are going to download it in this church building. Are you understanding me? But we are going to release it to the different places in the world. Eh? You are going to download it in your quiet time. You are going to download it in your personal work with God, in your personal prayers. But you are going to take it to the industries. You are going to take it to the companies. You are going to take it to the streets. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you now? So are you ready? Oh no, you are not in sync. Go back to Matthew. 
And I say unto you that thou hast Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of God shall not prevail against it. I say unto you that what? I say unto you that what? Thou art what? Come, come. I say unto you, are you with me? I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you what I'm saying to you? So, first of all, we know the destiny, we know the end point of this journey. What's the end point? The gates of hell will not prevail. What does it mean? Does it mean we are going to play draw draw? The gate of death does not prevail. We will don't prevail. We play draw draw. One one or zero zero. What does it mean? If, if, if the gate of death does not prevail, what's happening? We are prevailing. Is that true? Or can I quickly show you something? Can you say I'm a light in the midst of darkness? Can you say I'm a light in the midst of darkness? Can you say I'm going to go to the dark places of the, of the world and shine the light of Jesus? I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, you see, the church is here to enforce the victory of the Lord Jesus. I hear what I'm saying to you. Why is the church here? To enforce what? The church is here to enforce what? The victory of the Lord Jesus. He has won the victory, but we are here to do what? To enforce the victory of the Lord Jesus. Are you understanding me? That's why the church is in this world. Why are we here as a church to enforce the victory of the Lord Jesus in our city? Why are you where, why are you in the place where God has planted you, wherever you are in your company, your school, wherever you are, to enforce for the victory of the Lord Jesus? Are you understanding me? You see, God is not afraid to plant you in the midst of darkness. Because he, he knows that the gate of it shall not what? Shall not prevail. But just relax. Are you with me now? I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock. I will build my church. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock. Which rock? Which rock was Jesus Christ referring to there? The what? The revelation of what Jesus Christ as, as the Christ. Okay? So in other words, the Christ, the person of Christ. Hmm? So people say it's Peter. <laughs> that maybe, that he was declaring Peter as the leader that, that's the meaning that Peter will lead the church no it's not Peter Peter cannot carry he cannot even try it like Jesus cannot build his church on a man are you understanding me he can't build his church on Peter so he's, this is not talking about Peter are you understanding me hmm? now Peter as I said what you are the Christ the son of the living God so he revealed the person of Christ. Are you understanding me? So, safely put, and which is actually what it means, he's talking about that I'm going to build my church upon myself. Are you understanding me? Praise God. Shout hallelujah. You are Peter, and upon... Let, can I... So it's like, it's more like a demonstration. You're going to understand. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And if you want to refer to the revelation, what the revelation reveals is Christ, the person of Christ. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So, I'm going to build my church upon Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So, Jesus was not referring to Peter, because in fact, the, the words used there are different words. Are you understanding me? Thou art Peter. Thou art Petros. Peter, there's what? Is Petros. Which means a stone or a piece of a rock. A little rock. A, a, a small part of a rock. Thou art Petros. And upon this rock, the rock, rock there is Petra. Is a large mass of rock. Thou art Petros. And upon this Petra, I will build my church. I hear what I'm saying to you. I want to show you something very, very important this evening. Thou art what? Thou art Petros, and upon this Petra, I will build my church. Now, run to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You can see it. Just still see it. 
chapter 10, verse. Read from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all this eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Uh -huh. And that rock was Christ. I hear what I'm saying to you? They drank of what? That spiritual rock that followed them. But they drank a natural water. Is that not true? But it said that there is something about that rock that was Christ. Are you understanding me? So, Peter shows us here, I mean, Paul shows us here that Jesus is the rock. Or a rock. Because the word rock is also Petra. They drank of that Petra that followed him. And that Petra was Christ. And Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Are you with me? Are you understand what I'm saying to you? So, Jesus is saying that I'm going to build my church on my identity. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? Now, Peter, some years later, when he will now write the book of First Peter, chapter 2, he also now brought in that revelation. That's what that spoke to me about. You can read from verse 1. Go to verse 3. He told me that you have stated that the Lord is gracious, okay? So, one coming as what? Unto a living stone. I hear what I'm saying to you. So, Peter was speaking from. Now, you see, when Jesus spoke those words in Matthew, Peter might not have understood. In fact, he didn't understand. Are you understanding me? But years later, after understanding came, Peter himself now came to tell us, hey, that this Jesus we are talking about is a living stone. I hear what I'm saying to you. Is what? Is a living stone. I hear what I'm saying to you. You see, when you see the apostles rise, particularly those that were with Jesus, many of the things they wrote was now an understanding of many things, of the things they said to them years before that they now understood. <laughs> So Peter was writing this, are you understanding me? From that conversation that Jesus Christ had, that upon this rock I will build my church. He said, Jesus Christ is a living stone. Are you with me? Are you understanding me? So who is Jesus? He's the rock. He's alive. He's unmovable. So your life is built on, on a sure foundation. Are you understanding? Your life is what? It's built on a sure foundation. You see, if churches understand these things, we'll not be in a hurry. We'll not be in a hurry to get the people. We are going to stay, stay in the process because we are sure that the people will eventually come. The nations will come. Because the only thing we need to do is to enforce our victory and cast down Satan from the evils of our community. It's to win that war. Enforce victory. Are you with me now? Go back to Matthew. Are we ready now? Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will know what? And the gates of hell will not prevail. Are you sure you are still with me? Praise God forevermore. And the what? And the gates of hell will not prevail. Praise God forevermore. And the gaze of hell will not prevail. Are we still together? Now, I want to show you something. What is the relationship between Christ building his church and the gates of hell? Why did he bring the conversation of the gates of hell into this matter of building his church. Oh my. Can you see I'm a light in the midst of darkness? 
Can I say there was war in heaven? <laughs> but Satan was cast down. Is that true? I'm going to build my church and what? The gates of hell will not prevail. I've taught you something about this before when we were at Moon Age. I said, you see, I said this war here, this gates of hell thing, is not like the church is standing, then the gates of hell is now coming to fight against the church that will now fight, 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 that the gates of hell will not prevail. I said the real meaning is that the church is taking the battle to the very gates of hell. And you still you, you you see it now. Are you understanding me? Because what is the meaning? Look at this conversation. I will build my church. Are you understanding me? And upon this rock, you see, can I talk to you? You see, I've told you always to try and understand scripture by the way you read it. If you remove that semicolon and remove the other statement and get of your not prevail, just put full stop. Let's read. And I say unto thee that thou as Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Would it not make a lot of sense? Would anything be missing if they didn't have anything? You wouldn't have anything is missing. Are you understanding me? So why, if we could have just said, upon this rock, I will build my church, which would have been very beautiful, why should you be in conversion of the gates of hell? Are you still with me now? Don't forget Jesus Christ told them, he said, don't rejoice because the, the, the devils are subject to you. Why should you rejoice? Because your names are written in heaven. Are you understanding me? Because you have succeeded in casting Satan down. The place is where Satan ruled, you are now the one ruling. Are you understanding me? You have gained victory in the heavens of your community. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, why did Jesus bring the conversation of the gates of hell into the conversation, in, in the same conversation, no food, or in the same breath, into the conversation of what? Building his church. Do you want me to tell you? So he says what? Upon this rock, I will what? I will build my church. I am going to raise my church. I am going to establish my church upon my identity, upon the Christ. Are you with me? Are you understanding me? So, every building needs a foundation, right? Are you with me? <laughs> Are you still with me? Every building does what? Needs a foundation. So, the only foundation of the church is what? Is Christ. Eh? Is who? Is Christ. Any, any church that does not have Christ as its foundation is not the church of God. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? And I'm not saying they are mentioning the name of Christ though. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Any what the meaning of having Christ as the foundation because the foundation determines everything. Any church that Jesus is not Lord, that does not magnify the Lordship of Jesus, that is not being run by the Lordship of Christ, is not God's church. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Christ is the only true foundation of the church. Are you, are you what I'm saying to you? So, Christ in this scripture quickly shows us how to identify the church that is his own. He said, on this rock, I will build my church. So, any church that is my own has to be found on what? On this rock. Has to be found on my identity, on my person. Oh my God. Any church that is my own, are you with me now? Has to be running my agenda. Eh? Uh, are you still with me? Any what? Any church that belongs to me has to be what? Running my agenda. So if you find a church, they might even call him of they might write the name of Jesus, they might they might use the name of Jesus to paint their wall. Are you understanding me? But any church that is not running the agenda of Jesus, Jesus Christ quickly tells us that what? It is not my church. Are you understanding me? Because if it's my church, it has to be built on this rock. Are you what I'm saying to you? Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So, a church that is alive, that God calls his own, are you understanding me? That God can lay ownership to, that God can lay claim to, are you understanding me? Is that church running on the agenda of God? Are you with me now? Are you with me? So, Jesus is the only true foundation of the church, of his church. 
Are you with me? Are you still ready? Ah. Uh -huh. I want to show you why he said the gate of hell will not prevail. Because you are a light in the midst of darkness. Hmm? So Jesus showed us quickly the character of his church, the characteristics, and the foundation upon which that which is his church must be laid. Are you understanding me? Upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, can I talk to you? Are you with me now? Now, if you want to build a building, are you understanding me? You have to lay a foundation, right? Is that true? You have to lay what? You need a foundation. Is that true? But you see, to get a foundation, to build a foundation, you need a location. Uh, are you with me? You need what? A location. A piece of land. You need a place. So you, you, you can, if you say, I built my house, you have to mention the name of the place. Yeah. I built my house in Obadore. My house is in Obadore. You will mention the name of the street. The plot, plot one. Are you understanding the number? You know how the numbers is, the, is how they sold the land like. Do you understand? The way it is arranged. Number, so when they say number one, they're talking about, that number one, eh, he's talking about a land mass. He's talking about your portion in the entire land mass of that city. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you now? He's talking about what? Your land mass in the entire what? In the entire city. So, you can't lay a foundation, you can't build a house without laying a foundation. And you can't lay a foundation until you have acquired a, a land. Until you have a space, a location. Mm. Are you ready now? <laughs> Are you ready now? You see, the foundation that will carry the church, that must carry the true church of God, is Christ. But the location where Jesus will build this church are the places occupied by the case of him. Oh, are you with me? Are you with me? Hey. Are you sure? Why do you think he said the gate of hell will not prevail? Because, can I talk to you? Jesus, his only plan is to build his church in the very place that darkness has occupied. Uh, so, when I'm talking about the church of Jesus, eh, he's not looking for a place that is peaceful, a place that is righteous to go and build it. No, 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 no. It is the very places occupied by what? By the gates of hell that he goes. Those are the kind of land he buys. He said, we see, Jesus Christ, let's say they are selling land in the spirit. Jesus Christ wants to build his church. And he says, oh, who owns this land? Who owns, who owns this land? That, who owns this property? Now he said, this property is for, is for peace, it's for righteousness. Jesus Christ will say, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Are you understanding me? He says, you see, can you help me get a plot of land? I want to build my church. They say, ah, Jesus, we saw a plot of land. It is very good. In fact, the, the owner, his name is Righteousness. So your church, by the time you start building, you never have any problem. Jesus Christ, oh, I don't want that land. Are you understanding me? He say, ah, let them look for another land. Ah, let them come. Ah, Jesus, I saw one land. Oh. It's fine, oh. <laughs> but the owner, his name is the Gates of Hell. <laughs> Is the owner of that land. In fact, he has erected a structure on it. I hear what I'm saying to you. But his name is the gates of hell. <laughs> Jesus, I'm not sure you want to use that kind of land to build your church. Just guys, eh? The gates of hell. And I said, that is the exact land I want. Are you understanding me now? That you see, let me get all the property, all the lands owned by the gates of hell. Eh? It is on those lands that I will build my church. Oh God, if you understood these things, you will understand that you are a king in this world. You will rule as king. You will not be afraid to enter anywhere and take the city, take the systems, take everything for Jesus. Are you understanding me? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? So, the location, and I'm talking about the heavens so. The spirit location, the spirit spaces of the earth, of our communities. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? The location where Jesus says, I'm going to build my church, are places where the gates of hell are ruling. 
Now you understand why I say the gate of hell will not prevail. So, as Jesus is trying to establish the church in the city, are you understanding me? Don't forget who is, who is ruling in those places. The gates of hell, they are contending against the church that no, you will not be built. Are you understanding me? Because the work, what is happening there is that Jesus is now using his church to displace darkness. Oh, he's like he telling his disciples that I be on sit and fall like lightning. Your names are now written in heaven. Are you understanding me? He said, sit and fell like lightning from heaven. You, your names are now written there. That means the place you are now occupying is the place where Satan once occupied. Are you understanding me? You see, our very location where we have been sent to occupy are the place where the gates of devil have occupied. Yes. Can you say that serious war? Can you say there was war in heaven? So don't joke. Oh. But shall not what? Prevail. But I'm not going to show you the nature. Those are saying politics. Politics is not for God's children. Who is it for? Who is politics for? You see, the darkest places eh, are the very place where the spotlight of God's children can shine. Are you understanding me? The darkest places, the worst places on earth. Are you understanding me? The darkest cabals, the darkest places are the places where Jesus wants to build us, where he wants to establish us. Are you understanding me? And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So, Jesus, oh, let me, let me give you practical. <clears throat> are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So, why does Jesus send churches to cities? When you hear stories of those fathers, of course, I, oh, we are also in our own journey now. <clears throat> are you understanding me? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The cities God sent them to, are they a righteous city? Do they love Jesus already? They are dark cities, right? So, if they are dark cities and the people love darkness, idolatry, what the, what's the meaning? Who is reigning in the heaven of those, of those cities? Darkness, the gates of hell. But Jesus sends those men there, he sends the churches there. To go and do what? To, he wants to go and build them there. <laughs> you see? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He wants to go and build them. You hear people like, I but they will enter an entire city. They will turn it over to Jesus. How will Jesus look at the city full of darkness? I mean, we're not just talking about demons, so. Darkness, gates of hell. And he will now send his church there. It is this scripture. He, can, he cannot break his word. He said, the location for my church is where the gates of hell have occupied. No, they play. No play. Can you say no play? You see? That's why some churches, eh? They don't plan to be part of this church. So they quickly find their own method. <laughs> Are you with me? You see, if it's really the church of Christ, eh? You will be confronted by the gate of hell. Oh, that work you will be confronted is wrong. You will have to confront the gate of hell. Are you understanding me? I hear what I'm saying to you. You see, Churches take shortcuts because of this matter. A church that will gain victory is contending against the gate of hell. A believer that will gain victory is contending against what? The gate of hell, the path of darkness. Are you what I'm saying to you? And the gates of hell will not prevail. So, as we are trying to establish the church of God in the city, trying to establish the righteousness of God, grow the church Grow the business, grow whatever. Are you understanding me? What you are trying to do, Ofek Bale only learning. I hear what I'm saying to you. Yeah? I hear what I'm saying to you. You want to hijack for someone else's what? Property. Because the whole lies what? In wickedness. Satan the what? The God of what? This what? Don't forget Jesus Christ himself said it. Are you understanding me? I mean, Satan told Jesus. He said, I will, he showed him all the glory of the world, the world and his glory. And he said, and I will give him what it has been what? Delivered to me. You see, when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, he did not gain this word back. Oh. Are you hearing me? He did. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Jesus Christ died and resurrected. That thing that Satan said, that the world, the power, the kingdom has been delivered to me. You see, the death of Jesus Christ did not change it all. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? 
Now, when you are now resurrected, the kingdom now became now delivered to Jesus. It's not otherwise, eh? Years later, are you understanding me? Paul still came to write that in whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes. That was after Jesus Christ had died and gone. He said, in whom the God of this world. He still said again, he said, the spiritual wickedness in high places, the rulers of the darkness of this world. Are you understanding me? So Jesus Christ did not die and resurrect and immediately gain everything back from Satan. You know, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He died to put you in that position where you by yourself will displace Satan. Are you understanding me? You, you see, Jesus Christ wants to show Satan that you see, are you understanding me? That a small boy who receives my life can cast you down. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you understanding me? That a 14 year old girl, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Who receives my life just by receiving my seed, my life into her, can cast you down. Are you what I'm saying to you? Can I talk to you? God is not planning to change our world. All the change is in your hand. Where is the change? In your hand. You see, the righteousness, the life you want to see in your city, eh? Uh, what you want to see in your country, are you understand what I'm saying to you? Is not God's work. It's whose work? It's your work. Because he has put you in the very place where the gates of hell are. Are you what I'm saying to you now? Are we still together? Are you understanding me? You see, that is why whenever you are trying to build something for God, eh? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? What you are trying to do is to is, is to invade the heaven of that community. Eh? Are you still with me? Are you sure? You see, and I talk to you. Are you with me? When God sends a church to a city, hmm, what God has sent that church to do is to sit in the heaven of that community. Eh? Is to sit in the heaven of that city. You see, because once the church sits in the heaven of that city, are you understanding me? I told you the one that rules the heaven will rule the earth, will direct the affairs of the people. Once the church rules in the earth, sits in the heaven of that city, are you understanding me? The people's life now begin to reflect the kingdom of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You see, but the city where God sends his church, the heavens are already occupied by the gates of hell. Eh? You don't believe? If, if you chapter, chapter, chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. You see, this is very clear in the scriptures. Paul, Paul talking about this, the prince of the, 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 the spirit of the power of the air. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the words of the devil. Okay? Aha, you see it now. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So the church is what? Wrestling. The church is what? Wrestling. We are wrestling. The believer is wrestling. Are you understanding me? But this, do you understand the nature of this wrestling? It's not like, it's not like they came to meet also. What's the nature of this wrestling? We went to meet them. Oh, you people, are you getting what I'm saying? We wrestle. It's not like they created a ring for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get your bear, come. Church, come. Oh, yeah. Boxing ring. Yeah, come on. No, 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 no. Like, we went with full chests. With full chest to the places, to the cities, to the communities where the gates of Baal are ruling in their heavens. And we say we are here to take the city for Jesus. That's what we, are, that's what we did. I hear what I'm saying to you. So, it is the church, it is the believer that, that takes the war to the gates of Baal. Are you understanding me? Praise God for everyone. We do what? We take the word to the gates of hell. We take the word there. But against principalities now, against powers, you see now, against the rulers of what? The darkness of this world. So, the secret places of this world, the Indian places, the veiled places, the heavens of this world are being ruled by evil spirits, by powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Are you what I'm saying to you? So those are places, the, the air, the spirit realm, the air rooms of our cities are predominantly occupied by the gates of hell. But Jesus has sent us to our cities, to our communities, to our jobs to do what? To displace them, to cast them down. And what I'm saying to you now. So you see, you are not on that job to make money. Why are you there? To cast down Satan. Oh, there's no time. Are you with me now? You see, ah, this is this. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. You lose your right to dethrone Satan the moment you begin to live for this world. Let me leave that as that. We'll still get there. Not today. Are you understanding me? Are we still together? And the gates of hell we will not prevail against it. Are you understanding me? So you see, I hear what I'm saying to you. Jesus is not afraid. Amen. Amen. Are you going to fix? Is this one working already? The battery is low. Jesus is not what? Afraid to plant his church, to plant his children, eh? to plant his child, his people. Are you hearing me now? In the places that are occupied by darkness. Why? Because he has given a verdict. What that verdict? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you what I'm saying to you now? What's the verdict? The what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see? Are you what I'm saying to you? So you see, you are not trying to survive in this world. You are taking the war. To the, to the gates of hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So you see, if God is sending you into politics, what are you doing? You are taking the war there. Are you understanding me? If God is sending you into education, what are you doing? You are taking the war there. Are you understanding me? If God is sending you into business, what are you doing? You are taking the war there. If God is sending a church to a city, what are they doing? The church is what? Taking the war there. So, you see, we are not folding our hands and we are not waiting for uh, as long as they don't attack us, we will not attack. No, 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 no. It is full attack. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? We must unleash an outsource against the gate of hell. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You see, you must have this mindset that wherever you go, you are taking war there. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You are taking what? You are taking the war there. You are taking the war to that industry, you see? Because that industry is occupied, is ruled by the gates of hell. But you are taking the war there. Are you understanding me? Because, and why are you taking the war there? Because you are here to cast down Satan. So that where Satan once ruled, your names are now written there. You are not the one remaining. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you now? So you see, you are not trying to survive. Oh, are you with me? So the church is not trying to survive. Eh? The church is taking the war to the very gates of hell. Are you with me? Are you with me? So can you see that the, the Jelenka Christianity, the rubbish, the polluted Christianity we have cannot do this work? Those are those, you just want to survive and be fine. Let me just find a good job. Why? So that I can live a good life. Can... Ah! The space you are going is occupied by the gate of hell. And the reason why Jesus wants to build you there is so that you can dethrone those gates and establish his righteousness. You see, the reason why God will not leave some of his children is because of this matter. Eh? Because lifting is for detriment. 
Are you understanding me? When God lifts you, so that what you can go, you can take the word there and the it. Are you with me now? Are you with me now? Can I talk to you? You see, the child of God is the real war. Are you here? With, are you here? What I'm saying to you? Why that day? The child of God is what is the real war. Like you are war personified. You don't understand. Oh, when Jesus Christ was saying these things, and the gates of hell will not prevail, he has caused trouble. The meaning is that anywhere you enter, you will cause war. You will cause war. Are you getting this? That anywhere a child of God enters, anywhere the church goes, it causes what? It causes war. Because the church, the child of God is the real war. Why? Because the places you are sent to are places occupied by the gates of hell. Now you are going there with war and they are trying to resist. So they are trying to fight back. No, 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 you, you met us here. You met us here. You met us here. You know that man made darkness on earth. Man made darkness. Man made darkness on earth. But that same earth, God put man there. Because he trusts man. Because man is the real world. And I talk to you, the real creation man is the real world. Are you understanding me? Like you appear and Satan sees war. Are you understanding me? You see, your appearance wherever God plans it should be the appearance of war. Are you understanding me? You know what Jesus Christ said? He said, I have brought a war to the earth. Is that not what Jesus Christ said? Is that not what he said? How, how, how do you think? Oh, do you? Oh my God. Give me that scripture. He said, I have not brought peace. I have brought war. I've, ow, ow. Eh? He said a man will be against his father in law and all of that. Eh? Is that not it? Ah, has he brought war? Because war is a person. Are you understanding me? War is what? War is a person. War is a person. War is the new creation man. <coughs> I said Jesus Christ, you are bringing Jeremiah. What is this on? Let me chase this guy away from me. How can Jesus Christ be in Jeremiah? See, even on that time, come to send peace on it. I came not to send peace, but a sword. I tell that there's another place, or is it translation that says war? But a sword, that's war. Are you hearing me? How did he send this? How did he send this one? By sending the new creation, man. By sending the church. Wherever God sends you, he has sent war. War against what? War against the gates of hell. So you are a moving war. Are you understanding me? Are you, you are the real in the bosque. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Are you understanding me? You see, you must, you must eliminate worldliness from your life. I'm the war. Are you understanding me? You appear anywhere. You see, can I talk to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If you leave this life I'm talking about, whenever you appear, wherever, Satan is afraid. Satan is saying, oh, You see, some of you go somewhere and Satan is happy. You see, some believers go to some places. It, it, it might even be God open the door to them. But Satan is happy. Why? He has seen another tool. Are you understanding me? Some churches go to some places, cities and Satan is happy. Why? He has seen another tool, another, another company. Are you understanding? You see, but anytime, anything of any any time, anything of the life of God appears, Satan should be afraid. Why? Because the war has come to find him again. Are you understanding me? Because what? War has what? Come to find him again. That ah! This is this year has come to this city again. You know, Allah will you see, that's how the time should be thinking. Are you hearing me? Ah, glory center commission has come to Igondo. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Why? We are the war. What some of you are running from Zeta? <laughs> the real set is running, he's running. He's scared. Are you understanding me? If, he, if it's of the nature of the life of Christ, if it flows from the life of Christ, if it's connected to Christ, Satan is afraid. 
because the gates of hell will not prevail. They are, are you understanding me? You are trying to cheat them. You see, you are a cheat code. Are you understanding me? You are God's cheat code. Our church is God's cheat code. The church is God's cheat code. To collect all the land that Satan has stolen. You, you know he stole it. He stole it from Adam. By trickery. Are you understanding me? God wants to collect the land back. But through you. So, we should appear and Satan should be trembling. Are you with me? Satan should be trembling that this church has come here again. This believer has come to this company. Ah! This guy has left empty and he has now come to Google. Hey, wala di wale o. Trouble has come. But Satan is not even afraid of many believers. He's not afraid of you changing jobs. He's not afraid of you getting jobs of ten thousand dollars. Why? He knows that you are one of his tools because of your mindset. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Glory to God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, the summary of the of the of the word is that what? The gate of the cannot prevail. Are you understanding me? But you have to understand that it is you that is taking what? The war to the gates of hell. Are you understanding me? So, why do you want that job? Why do you want that business? Why do you want this thing? Why do you want that? What's the mindset? I want to go and dethrone Satan. Are you understanding me? If you still to buy a car, if you still to use a good car to be to do a nice to have a nice house, to, hey, you are not ready, yo. and you don't even need Jesus for those ones. Do you need Jesus? Do you know how many people are billionaires without Jesus? So is that what we are talking about? We are talking about the detriment of the powers of darkness. We are talking about the liberation of cities, of communities, of systems. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We are talking about you casting Satan down from heaven so that your own name cannot be written in the heaven. We are talking about you delivering cities from the power of Satan. We are talking about you reigning in life. Reigning, sitting in the heavens of your communities. Casting Satan down. Talking about you getting a job and Satan is trembling. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. About you getting what? A job and what? Satan is trembling. Ah, that this idiot has come here again. This idiot has come. When he was, when he was with that company, that's how he converted, he converted all of them. He spoiled my work. Hey! For this reason, what? The Son of God. The Son of Man is what? Made manifest. Why? The majority of the works of the devil. So how can a church be in a city? How can a believer be in a place and the work of devil is prospering? It's because we are not waging war. We are not taking the war there. We just want comfort. We are there for survival. Are you with me now? I said you are the war. You are the war. You are the war that Satan is... Are you with me? You are the war that Satan is running from. Are you with me? Satan is what? Do you know there are churches that Satan by himself will evangelize for them? You don't understand. There are churches that Satan himself will pull crowd for. He will say, please go to that church. He will touch people. Don't you know Satan can touch people's hearts? He can speak to people's ears. Speak to them. I'm telling you, there are churches eh, that Satan himself and his demons will be the one looking for members for them. Are you with me? He'll be the one trying to you see, Satan, you see, Satan can even join him in prayer that God, please quickly fill this church up. You see, but it's not going. Are you here with me? <laughs> Satan can be joining them in their fasting and prayer so that the, the church will be filled. Are you understanding? Can I talk to you? There are churches eh, that Satan is evangelizing for. He wanted to be filled up fast. Why? He knows they are part of his branches. They are not bringing any word to me. Can I talk to you? There are some believers that Satan is looking for a job for. Are you understanding me? There are some believers that Satan wants their business to work. He wants their career to thrive. Why? He knows that. He knows that their promotion, wealth in their hand, is still his own tool. 
I don't understand him. You see, but whenever something from God, whenever the believer or the church appears as a war, as the war, Satan is trembling. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? And how do we appear as war, as the war, taking the word to Satan? Because we are operating under his lordship, the lordship, the lordship of Christ. Are you with me now? Let me drown, please. Ah, I thought you were doing something. Amen. Glory to God. Let me go with verse 19 now. We are done for today. Amen. Praise God. So you see, the plan of, what was the plan of Jesus? To build his church. Okay? Are you understanding me? To build what? His church. His people, his children. To establish his children. Now when I say church, you don't just look at the local church. Of course the local church. Are you with me? But also look at yourself. God's children. It's to establish his children in places occupied by what? By darkness. So he said, let your light so shine. Are you with me? So you see, that is why you must build capacity. Are you understanding me? You see, this is one of the reasons, a major reason, why God takes time in lifting men. Because God does not lift you so that you can now have a status. God lifts you so that you can cast down Satan. Are you with me? Are you with me? So God takes time in lifting men. Because some men have converted God's promotion to their personal enjoyment. Whereas promotion is meant for casting down Satan. Are you understanding me? Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are you, are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Are you blessed? I'm talking about reigning in life. How to reign in life is to rule, is to sit in heaven. To cast down Satan. You see, and that, that heaven you want to sit in, eh? the heaven of the cities, of the communities, of whatever community means, as I've explained to you, are you understanding me? The heavens you want to sit in, the people sitting there are weak, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers. Are you understanding me? Gates of hell. But Jesus Christ says that is where he wants you to sit. He says, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So don't stop until your names are written there. And I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding me? And whatsoever thou shalt bind on it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on it shall be loosed in heaven. Can I just talk to you briefly about this? And I'll give unto you what? Who will he give the keys? The church is church. Are you understanding me? Of the, of, the, of the what? Of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding me? You see, God wants the earth eh, to draw pattern from heaven. To draw patterns. God wants the life of heaven to power the earth. Are you understanding me? God wants the earth, our natural earth, our natural spaces, natural engagements to be powered by what? Divine life. Are you with me? To be powered by what? Are you with me? God wants our earth, our world to be powered by what? Divine life. To be powered by the glory and the power of the kingdom. Are you with me? But you see, I told you the last time I taught this, are you with me? That when something is released from the realms of God, it doesn't come to our head directly. It passes through the heavens of our head. So if it can win in that space, then it's now manifested. So even though God wants his glory and his kingdom to rule, to be the one powering our earth realm, our natural world, our natural life, are you understanding me? It doesn't, it doesn't invade our natural world, the natural thing we can see, the natural space, with his glory. Are you understanding me? The, you, it, the glory has to rule from the 
spirit space of our earth. Are you understanding me? The glory is deposited into the spirit space of our what? Our earth. But the people living in that spirit space presently are what? Are the gates of your the powers of darkness. So Jesus Christ now says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. They are going to cast down the gates of hell. Are you understanding me? They are going to do what? Cast down the gates of hell. They are going to displace the gates of hell from the heavens of their cities. And when that is done, they can now operate the kingdom of heaven in the heavens of their cities, of their communities. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? Don't forget, it is, it is sequential and I will give you. Are you understanding me? Because you are my church that have built, that have contended against the gate of the hell. Are you understanding me? And that have prevailed. And because you have prevailed, are you understanding what I'm saying now? Because you have cast down Satan from the heavens of your earth, from the heavens of your community, are you understanding me? You can now operate the kingdom of God, the power of the kingdom, from the heavens of your community, and in turn, it will now, it will now affect the earth of your community. It will affect the natural light. And you will see it shortly. Are you understanding me? So, can you see colon there? And I'll give you the case of the kingdom of everywhere here. See you. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on it shall be bound in them there. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on it shall be what? Shall be loosed in them. Now, bind on it, bound in heaven. Lose on it, lose in heaven. That heaven now is not the same as that kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding me? It's not talking about the realms of God. Are you with me? I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That keys of the kingdom of heaven is talking about that what works in God's kingdom should not be at work where in your own earth. Are you understanding me? That will be that kingdom come, that will be done on it as it is in heaven. Are you hearing me now? That what powers the kingdom of God, the glory, the life of God, that powers God's kingdom. God wants it to be operational in your head. God wants it to be operational in your business. You understand what I'm saying? The life of the kingdom, the glory of the kingdom, God wants to be operational in your city, in your job, in your career, in your marriage, in your health, in your finances. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God wants to be what? Operational. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? But you see, it won't be operational, are you understanding me, until you have cast out you have cast down Satan from your heaven. So, when you cast down Satan from your heaven, are you understanding me? From the heaven of your community, from the spirit space of your community, you can now operate the life of the kingdom from the heaven of that community. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That's why he said, the gate of heaven, I'll be my the gate of heaven will not prevail. That means you have prevailed. Now, because you have prevailed, if you have prevailed, if you have prevailed what, what does it mean? It means that you are succeeded in casting down the gates of hell from the heavens of that community. So, because you have now done that, what the heavens of that community will now be experiencing is the kingdom of heaven. Are you with me? Are you understanding me? Can I talk to you? You can run your life by the glory of God's kingdom. You can run your life by the power of the kingdom. You can run your life by the life of the kingdom. Are you understanding me? A city can run on the glory of God's kingdom. A business can run on the glory of God's kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? That the operating system in the heaven of your community is now what? The kingdom of God. That you now, can I talk to you? I'll give you the case of the kingdom of heaven. That you now have permission to operate kingdom life. In your natural world. How? Because you have prevailed against the gate of hell and you have institutionalized the kingdom of God in the heavens, in the spirit space of your community. So, see what it says now. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now, that heaven now, eh? That second heaven. Bind on earth, bound in heaven. That bind, that heaven eh, was where the gates of hell were formerly occupied. 
I hear what I'm saying to you. I hear what I'm saying to you. That heaven, you need, you need to understand this conversation. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Are you with me? Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now, that heaven, that particular heaven, is the high places, is the spirit spaces of the earth. Now, the formula occupied by what? By the gates of hell that did not allow the kingdom of God to prosper in the city. Hmm? They did not allow the kingdom of God to prosper in the community because what was ruling in those in the heavens of those cities, of that, of those earths, I don't understand what I'm saying to you, is at the gates of hell. And what the earth will see is the operations, is the fruit of the gates of hell. Are you with me now? But now that you have prevailed against the gates of hell, are you understanding me? The heaven of your earth, are you understanding me? Can now operate by the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding me? Now that you have succeeded in casting down Satan from the heavens of your community, the heaven of your community can now operate by the keys of the kingdom. What works in the kingdom can now work in the heaven of your community so that whatsoever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Let me explain to you. So that now that you have cleared the spirit space of your head, if you now say in your head, that no more sickness in this city. It now has an, an approval. Not from God. It now has an approval. It is now signed into law. In where? In the heaven of that city. Oh my God. Whatever you want, you bind on it. Shall be bound in heaven. Why? Because. Be, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Because the person binding on it, eh, and what is now operational in heaven are one. Do you understand? I hear me. Formerly, people are trying to bind on it, but what is operating in the heaven of the city are the gates of hell. Are you understanding? They are trying to bind on it without casting down Satan from heaven. They are trying to bind on it without defeating the gates of hell that are operating in the heavens of the city. Are you understanding me? Whatsoever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Are you what I'm saying to you? It means that it is not every time you bind on it that, you, that something is bound. Oh God. Whatsoever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Can I talk to you? That means that until something is bound in heaven, it is not yet bound on earth, even though you say it should be bound. Oh God, I need you. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Whatsoever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Now, where did you first bind it? Earth. You see, if you bind it on earth, eh, if they don't, if it is not bound in heaven, if they don't bind it, never let them go that way. I'll still explain. It will not be bound on earth. So, that you have bound it on earth, now that is it with words. Does not mean it will happen. It will only happen when it has become law in the heaven of that earth. Mm. Are you with me? Whatsoever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Now, so it starts from the head, and that is prayers. Can you say prayers? Can you say prayers? He says, whatsoever you bind. Are you understanding me? Are you what I'm saying to you? Whatsoever you bind on it shall be what? Bound in heaven. Can I explain to you? That means we can bind immorality in the earth. In our city. To be that way. Are you understanding me? We can bind what? Immorality where? In the earth of our city. Are you understanding me? But you see, the only way to be bound is if it is bound in heaven. If it is approved, if it is signed into law, if it is stamped in the heaven of that city, in the spirit space of that city. Are you understanding me? But you see, but it won't be bound in the heaven of that city until the gates of hell ruling from the heaven of that city have been cast down. 
Are you getting that? I need to see these scriptures together. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? So, now that you have succeeded in casting down the gates of hell, what is now operating in the heaven of that city is the kingdom of God. So that now, when you say to the earth, when you say to your city, no more immorality here, because the person saying it, are you understanding me? And the power that is now operating in the heaven of that city are one. It is signed into law. What's the point? Until we dethrone Satan, until we cast down Satan from the heaven of our cities. Are you understanding me? We cannot do anything in Israel. Nothing will happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Can I explain to you practically? Ah, uh, a lot of churches and believers are not trying to cast and bind. Are they not trying to arrange? Are you hearing what I'm Not, are you? Are, our prayer has not been offered. Can you, can you hear me? I'm going to show you something. Uh, every power of darkness in this city. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Everything that is making young boys going to front. Have you seen prayers? Is that not trying to bind? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are things being bound? Talk to me, are things being bound? No, why? Because they are not being bound in heaven. Why? Because the gates of hell are still ruling there. So it's not about what you try to bind on it. It's about what is happening in the heaven of the city. It's about what is happening in the heaven of the community. Are you understanding me? Have you prevailed against the gate of hell? Have you unseated Satan? Have you cast him down? Because until you cast him down, you will not have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, the keys of the kingdom of heaven are for those who have cast him down, who have sent him packing, who have dethroned him. So it is now the keys. Are you understanding me? It is now the oppression of the kingdom that will now be at work in the spirit spaces of their of their community. So that now, are you understanding me? Do you understand what this means? It means that the earth of that city. And it's everyone now in sync. They're now in synergy. Oh, are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? Whatever you want, you bind on it and what? Bound in heaven. So there's now synergy between what? A city's natural landscape and it's heaven. There's synergy. Why? You are now sitting there. You have bound Satan. You have cast him out. Cast him down. Are you still with me now? Are you understanding me? Whatever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven. Eh? So it's not. Oh, let me close. Let me close. Amen. May Lord give us understanding. So our work as a church, your work as a believer, is to cast down Satan. That's the point. Is to what? Is to cast down Satan from the places where it's ruling. Cast him down from the heavens of community and do what? And take your city there. So that when you look at a city naturally and you see, you see vices prevalent and you declare that I don't want to see this thing in this city again. What happened? Because you are not sitting there, what happened? It is established there. So, after that is established, what happened? The fruit now appears on it. Are you understanding me? So, until a church gains victory in its heavens, in the heavens of the city, are you understanding me? It will not have fruits on it. Are you understanding me? Until a believer gains victory where? In heaven. He will not have victory on it. He will not have fruits on it. When I'm talking about fruit, I'm not talking about arrangement or that arrange, you're, because your church is just trying to be worldly, you now have crowd, you now have money. No, no, no. Hey, when you see real fruits, eh, there's crowd, there's money, and there's righteousness. Are you understanding me? When you see what? When you see, when I'm talking about fruitfulness, there's crowd, there's money, there's influence, there's influence, there's transformation, there's a change of life. You see Jesus glorified. That's, that's what I mean by fruit. You see? A church can have fruit. You see, fruit is what is visible for people to see. 
and you only see fruit on earth. Are you understanding me? If your earth will be fruitful, you have to gain victory in heaven. Because whatever you bind on earth, you bind them. So let me, it's, it's a cycle, let me explain. It starts from earth, from the earth. You start binding on earth. I don't want this again. I don't want this in my life. I don't want this in my marriage. Are you applying this to your personal life too? I don't want this in my business. I don't want this in my marriage. I don't want this in my career. I don't want this in my city. It starts from the earth. Prayers. Are you understanding me? But you see, they go check it with the heaven. Are you hearing me? It ascend. They go. Are you understanding me? They take it to the heavens of the city and check, and check what they check it with. They check the words. Are you the decree? Not binding, losing his decree, his authority, his declaring. So they check it. They take it to the heavens of that city and check what is basically saying. Is it in sync with what is ruling in this heaven? Is the kingdom already ruling in this heaven? If the kingdom is not ruling, the world just bounces. That's why he said that what? The kingdom will not prevail. Then I will give you the keys. Are you understanding me? So it's, so it's a cycle. It starts from the head. You lift up prayers. You declare words. Are you understanding me? The words are taken into the heavens of the cities, of the community where you are, that you are declaring over. Are you understanding me? If they find that your declaration, are you understanding me, is in sync with the spirit ruling the heavens of that community, of that thing. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? Then there's an approver. Are you understanding me? What you said now has an approver from that spirit. It is now stamped as what should be the order of life in the earth. So when this is now stamped, it now comes back as rain, as fruit upon your head. Are you understanding me? See, that's how breakthrough happens. Though. That's how change happens. You have to win in heaven. Are you understanding me? So a lot of churches don't win in heaven. They don't take the world to the gates of hell. They don't cast on the gate of hell. So they produce false fruit. They make up fruit for themselves. And some believers also. Are you understanding me? But what's our destiny? To rule, to rule in this world, to reign in this life. And how are we going to reign in this life? We are going to reign in heaven. We are going to sit in heaven. We are going to cast down Satan. You see? And our fruit will appear for all men to see. I hear what I'm saying to you. Brothers and sisters, it is real war. But you know the end of the war, right? The gates of hell cannot prevail. So you must give yourself to this war. Knowing that what? You are victorious. So, a church, we are not going to behave as people who just want to survive. We are not here as a church that let us just have a, our church too should grow. Let's have some numbers. No, 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 no. Let's have some more. No, 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 no. We know why we are here. It's to put down the gates of hell. It's to cast in. Now, you see, when you, Satan is to blind people's eyes to this. When you succeed in that one, there will be fruit on it. I'm telling you the truth. In your life, eh? When you succeed in this matter of casting down Satan, of casting down the gate of hell from the heavens, when you succeed, when you now begin to sit in the in that heavens where Satan fell from, and you, will, you will begin to see a lot of fruits in your head. I'm telling you the truth. But Satan blinds people, it makes them pursue fruits and forsake casting him down. So they now begin to have what looks like fruit, but which is no fruit. So, you see, if you see real fruit, eh, one of the evidence eh, of fruits that comes from God that comes as a result of casting down Satan is that you see Jesus glorified. You see the glory of God in it. May Lord bless us and give us more and more grace. Can we just pray and talk to God? That Lord I'm in alignment. I submit to your Lordship because you see everything starts with his Lordship. I will build my church on this rock and the gates of hell will not prevail. Can you pray unto the Lord Jesus? I submit myself to your authority. I submit myself to you. I submit myself to you. I live under your authority. I live under your authority. I live by the dictate of heaven. I live according to your will. I'm not here for survival. I'm not here to make money. I'm not here to have a big church. I'm here to cast down Satan. And that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm not here to make to be a billionaire. Even when the billions are coming, I'm here. I'm here to cast down Satan. Because only when I cast down Satan will the city be saved. Our church is not here to be a mega church. We are here to cast down Satan because when we cast down Satan, the fruits will come. We will be mega. People will flood in and they will be on fire for Jesus. I give myself to you. Oh, Jesus, help me. Let's pray. Let's pray and talk to God.